and they're mocking his addiction, charging him an extraordinary amounts of money. Matthew Perry يعيد قضية وفاة مايكل جاكسون للواجهة. The ketamine queen is looking at a potential life sentence in federal prison. I'm gonna die alone. من حادث موت عادي للاشتباه في جريمة قتل هذا هو اللي وصل له مكتب الادعاء الأمريكي بعد عشر شهور من وفاة ماثيو بيري في منزله في خبر صدم محبي خاصة أن المشتبه فيهم من أقرب الناس إله وهما مساعد وطبيبان ويقال أنهم جزء من شبكة إجرامية كبيرة زودت بيري وآخرين بالكتامين واستغلوا مشاكل إدمانه I was also doing ketamine infusions every day to ease pain and help with depression ولنعرف تطورات القضية وتفاصيلها الجديدة إيتي بالعربي قابل نيما Ramani, Matthew Perry's case really involves two different schemes. The first is a scheme involving doctors that prescribed Matthew Perry ketamine. And the problem was they did so knowing that he had a significant opioid addiction, that he was using large amounts of ketamine, and that he had an underlying heart problem. The issue with ketamine is that it's supposed to be administered at a doctor's office. In its pure form, it's a liquid, so doctors will give a ketamine infusion through an IV. It's not supposed to be sent home with the patient, and certainly his assistant shouldn't have been the one administering IV ketamine to Matthew Perry at home. فالكتامين هو نوع من أنواع المواد المخدرة بيستخدم في العمليات الجراحية ومؤخرا بدأ استخدامه لمعالجة حالات الاكتئاب وبالرغم أنه ماثيو كان تعالج من الإدمان من فترة إلا أنهم استغلوا حالته علشان يكسبوا فلوس Five people, so we have the two doctors but then we have the assistant The assistant really was involved in both cases When Matthew Perry was unable to get as much ketamine as he needed from his doctors he turned to street drug dealers And there's two individuals involved there. One is the ketamine queen who provided the ketamine to a distributor who provided it to Perry and his assistant. وعند تشريح الجثة وجدت الشرطة الأمريكية نسبة عالية من المخدر في جسمه وهذا خلاهم يشكوا في سبب وفاته ويبدأوا التحقيقات. The text messages in this case are powerful evidence. The doctors are communicating with one another and saying that they are only providing Matthew Perry ketamine to make money off him. It's really price gouging and they're mocking his addiction. Knowing that he desperately needs it and charging him extraordinary amounts of money for doing so. These are doctors. They're supposed to be looking out for their patient's best interest. They swore an oath to do no harm, but instead they're profiting off someone that they know is a drug addict. I think that's something that jurors at trial will absolutely hate. ومن المتوقع أن تبدأ المحاكمة في أسرع وقت. Criminal cases tend to move quicker than civil ones, so this case may go to trial in a matter of months or less than a year. But ultimately, it's the defendant's right to a speedy trial. They waive that right and say they need more time to prepare their case. Judges routinely grant those requests. I expect this case to go to trial in 2025. Ketamine Queen is looking at a potential life sentence in federal prison because she has been involved in those two drug-related deaths. And she was also distributing methamphetamine, which under federal law is a more serious crime than ketamine. The doctor is looking at 10 or 20 years in prison because not only did they unlawfully prescribe ketamine, After they found out they were under investigation, they falsified medical records to make it seem like it was a legitimate medical purpose for them providing Matthew Perry all this ketamine. وهالقضية بتذكرنا بقضية مايكل جاكسون اللي تم الكشف بعد سنتين من وفاته إنه الدكتور الخاص فيه كان السبب في موته. There were two very powerful anesthetics involved in both cases in Michael Jackson's case, Propofol, that his doctor prescribed and administered to help Michael Jackson sleep. In this case, ketamine. But one key difference in the cases is that the doctors in the Matthew Perry case didn't provide the ketamine that killed Matthew Perry. It was the street level drug dealers that did. And obviously in Michael Jackson's case, it was the doctor himself that killed Michael Jackson because he provided propofol and wasn't monitoring him like he should have been.